Is the Tensor G4 powering the Pixel 9 series of phones fast? And how does one determine if it is fast? That is sort of the topic for today's video. You've probably seen all sorts of information flying back and forth, benchmark scores, throttling tests, so forth and so on. And a lot of them seem to point in a negative direction. We're gonna try and sift through all of this and determine kind of what you should be expecting performance wise out of the Pixel 9. And I want to encourage you to stick through the end of this video because it is probably going to be a rather surprising result. I do want to start though with some benchmark scores, which is something that I have sort of talked negatively about for a long time. I don't really think benchmark scores are particularly useful these days, and we're gonna get into that. So we're gonna start with some benchmark scores that were found on 91 mobiles. I posted all this on threads if you wanna see kind of how all this stuff is uh, laid out, but I'm gonna go directly to the source here and show you these. So the Tensor G4 versus the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 4. They tested it with and 22 Geekbench and other benchmark scores. This was a handful of days ago, so it is possible that these scores will go up for the Tensor as this device has not actually been released and there may be some sort of a day one patch that improves performance a little bit. But regardless, these are just the scores and I don't have to really break these down to you. The scores are significantly lower on the Tensor G4 versus on the Snapdragon. You can see there the number is wildly, wildly lower across the board. I don't know what they're doing with these commas here. They put their commas in very strange places to my understanding and 2-2 scores typically look like this. This was even earlier pre-release. So I don't really know why they put those commas there. That kind of confused me for a second. We're gonna move on. Geekbench scores, again, Single core much lower, multi core much lower. I think there's a chance that these do come up as the device actually hits the market, but it's not going to beat the Snapdragon. You can go through pretty much any benchmark and it is going to lose to the Snapdragon processor and that obviously looks bad. What does Google actually say about the performance improvement on the Tensor G4? I'll put a link to this article in the description. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link to this threads post and all of the sources will be in there. It'll just be simpler for me to do it that way. They say that it is 20% faster in web performance and it opens up apps 17% faster. It says that Gemini Nano is three times more capable, whatever that specifically means, 45 tokens per second. My understanding is that a token is almost like an action, so we can basically do 45 things a second. That's probably an oversimplification, but we're going to move on. Anyways, battery life is 20% better, and peak and sustained performance is improved. I left off a quotation mark there. The problem with this is that all we have are numbers. We have benchmarks performed by a third party, and we have percentage numbers given to us by Google. What we actually need is real world performance. If you're leading up to this though, you may be thinking this does not look particularly good for the Pixel 9. It's getting absolutely throttled by the Snapdragon processors. I'm going to show you something though. This is a video posted a couple days ago by In-Depth Tech Reviews. You can see that it's got 155,000 views and there is good reason for this because this is a mind-blowing test. This individual at in-depth tech reviews, got their hands on a Pixel 9 Pro XL early, and it wasn't through Google PR and it wasn't through Team Pixel because otherwise they would be bound by an embargo. So they got it some other method and they have performed a series of tests on the Pixel 9 Pro XL. Now, I'm going to put a link directly to this video in the description down below because I absolutely want you to go watch this video. It is excellent. What happens in this video, I'm going to give you kind of an overview, is for 30 minutes, it is put through, all three of these phones are put through a series of tests. Microsoft Teams meetings, so they're actually streaming their phone screen to a secondary phone. You have a 2160p YouTube video playing in picture in picture. There's navigation going on in the background, and it's playing Asphalt 9 all on cellular data for half an hour. And as they go through this test, the results start off surprising, and they only get more and more surprising as we go again you're going to want to go watch the full video and see all of the details but to put things as sort of succinctly and briefly as possible we'll get to where they had everything kind of maxed out the pixel 9 pro xl absolutely murdered this test at least compared to expectations you could argue it had the best performance 
of any of the phones. There are some places where it still struggled, but it did phenomenally well and far, 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 far better than you would ever think if you were looking at these benchmark scores. You would think it's going to absolutely get dragged, and it mostly did the dragging. The S24 Ultra actually got so hot that it shut down the, uh, the game that it was running, so it was disqualified. As you can see here, no crashes from the iPhone or the Pixel. The Pixel had, it maintained, guys. It maintained the smoothest gameplay. Towards the end of the test, the iPhone game started to lag to the point that he actually said it was occasionally unplayable. Now, this is still a problem. 48.6 degrees Celsius, the Pixel still gets very, very warm. Now, that is something that's a little bit tricky to measure, though. You're measuring the external temperature, and it's possible that the Pixel is intentionally bringing that temperature to the outside of the device to dissipate it. We don't know what the internal temperature is. I would say it's probably still way hotter than it should be and way hotter than the iPhone or the S24 Ultra in that case. And of course, screen sharing was better on the iPhone. But another interesting point, the Pixel was the brightest screen across the test. The S24 Ultra got hot and dimmed. And even though the Pixel got a little warm and dimmed, it was still apparently the brightest screen of all three of them. So again, looking at the benchmarks, you might think it's going to be a disaster, but in real-world tests, it absolutely shocked me. I also want to bring your attention back to this particular post. I talked about this in an earlier video, but I'm going to talk about it again. You may have seen this going around. Pixel 9 Pro XL, better luck next year, showing this throttling test where it basically pushes the Pixel to like maximum CPU utilization. It gets hot, and it tells you how it throttles. You can see here it got really hot. It dipped down to 50% of its max performance. It recovered and then stayed somewhere in the like mid to high 60% for its performance. This does look very, very bad. But I grabbed my Pixel 8 Pro. I ran the exact same test. And it throttled down to 68% of its max performance. So I said when I talked about this, this is probably something that's not going to actually happen in the real world because there's probably some further optimization in the software that is going to prevent this sort of thing from happening. They're probably testing on an unreleased device with unfinished software. And I think that if you look at the fact that that person was able to get this kind of a result from the Pixel 9 Pro, I think that that backs up my earlier assumption that things are not quite what they seem in synthetic testing synthetic benchmarks. When it comes to real-world performance, software optimization is often king. You can't just look at synthetic benchmarks and determine which phone is faster, which phone is slower. I also want to point out that in that test, 15% battery drain, 12% battery drain. So it was still worse than the iPhone. This is a bit misleading because it actually failed the test. You had to look at the per minute and the iPhone, sorry, the Pixel and the Galaxy were right there neck and neck, but they were all only separated by 0.1% per minute. So again, efficiency might be pretty, pretty decently improved, guys. Hopefully this sort of clears things up a little bit. I, you know, I've been banging on this drum for a while. Don't look at synthetic benchmarks and think that tells you how the phone's going to perform. You need real world testing. And what a great, great, incredible job done by in-depth tech reviews. Again, link in the description to their video. They deserve a ton of credit for what they've done here with this test because it is very, very enlightening. I cannot wait to get the Pixel 9 Pro XL into my hands and I will test it myself review for that should be coming in the next couple of weeks. My device should arrive relatively soon. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that content. I will see you in the next one. Until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.